Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. And today is Friday, February 28th, 2020. Today's poem is by a uh, poet, an American poet named Ryan Wilson, who was born in 1982. He works for the Association of Literary Scholars, Critics, and Writers, and is the editor of Literary Matters, and is an award-winning poet. His first collection of poetry is called The Stranger World, and it came out in 2017. His work has been published all over the place, from the Hopkins Review, to New Criterion, to First Things, to the Sewanee Review, the Yale Review, many other places. And uh, his book, The Stranger World, won the Donald Justice Poetry Prize in 2017. Highly recommend you check him out, especially if you like... um, Poetry with a Formal Bent. And the poem that I'm going to read today is from that book, The Stranger World, and it's called For a Dog. It goes like this. You'd wake us up, that shrill, insistent bark driving away whatever dreams had fogged our vision. And we'd rise in the true dark, wondering just what exactly, catalogued by canine instinct under threat, was there. What jogger, cat, or dog it was that dogged you from your drowse beside the easy chair and summoned your yapped pandemonium. Nine times in ten it was just empty air, some ghosted scent you sniffed. Dumb. You were dumb, like all dogs snuffling up to snakes, afraid of mice. When we said, come, you wouldn't come. You capered when commanded to play dead, and when we wanted most to be alone, you'd offer up that imbecilic head until we crowned your pity with a bone. Our lives took on the shape you spun from need, the harried rondure of routine. You gone, the house is quieter, and we've been freed forever from the never-ending chores your tail entailed, the scrubbing where you peed, the hunting stain removers down in stores. What's hardest are the peaceful hours we wanted so much when you were scratching up the doors and howling at some phantom thing that haunted the world without. Some threat we couldn't see that you were desperate to have confronted. Now you're part of that present unity of absences, the living move among, in which what was, what will, and what can't be dance in a ring to a triumphant song we don't have ears to hear or hard to see, who sleep now perfectly and much too long. There's a long tradition of of poets writing poetry to dogs, or to their pets in general, but mainly to dogs. And uh, you can probably Google poems about dogs and find all kinds of classic ones. I read a Wendell Berry poem yesterday to you, and he has a a great one about walking in the woods um, shortly after his dog died. And like many of the greatest poems about dogs, they are celebrations of, of memories. Um, and I often think, when I think about these poems about dogs, what it is that makes them so contemplative. I suppose it's just, you know, on the one hand, the idea that dog is man's best friend, right? That they become such a, a fixtures in our lives, and when they're gone, there's a real absence that, that we feel very strongly. And so then the poets respond to that. And maybe poets are the kind of people also who uh, have strong attachments with dogs. I don't know. I've never thought about that until I just said it. Generally not a good idea on a podcast, I suppose. But great poets also take the particular special relationship humans have with dogs and then the absence that comes into your life when the dog is gone and imbue them with a contemplation of the hauntedness of being left without something or someone you love here on earth and i wonder if one of the reasons that they're able to the great poets are able to do this and why the memory of a dog is such a common topic for this sort of thing is because in a way it allows us to contemplate harsh, uh, sad, sad realities without having to always focus on the more profound sadness of losing a, a human being who we truly love, which I don't mean to diminish the relationship between a human and a dog. I, I love my dog, but I don't, very few people would suggest that losing a dog is like losing a, losing a parent or a child or a spouse, say, or, or a very good friend. But it's a, uh, in a way, it's it's a it's a shadow of that sadness, of that of that uh, grief, and so I think that great poets 
in the in the shadow of that shadow, if you will, in the shadow of that grief, are able to to contemplate something deeply and richly in a way that also allows them to contemplate uh, the the deeper grief of losing and being lost, um, and then and the the reality of that in this life. One of the things that I really like about this poem is that there's a formality to it. Wilson's of definitely a formalist, I would say, and there is a there is a consistent form to this poem. It's made of eleven stanzas of three lines, and each line has an A B A rhyme scheme. So, bark, fog, dark in the first line, cataloged, there, dogged, and so forth. And then uh, the repeating patterns are precise. And those repeating patterns are precise and quite efficient in a sense, you know. Um, There's a real, you can tell that Wilson has a real gift for it. But it's also a very playful poem. And it reflects on the playful relationship that, that is between a dog and its master. And then in that playfulness, in that interaction between the playfulness of the dog, the, the playfulness of, the, of these memories, and the formalism of the poem is that, is that area where the, the poet is able to remember how much in the moment he didn't like the chaos that the dog brought, but in, in memory, the chaos is what he longs for. And I find that fascinating that he merges uh, the sort of playfulness of the dog and the theme with well, and the, and the, and the, the things that the dog brought to him in his life with the formalism. And that seems to mirror the complexity of remembering that chaos fondly and the way that that is a sort of nostalgia, like a sort of hurt within the soul um, in remembering. So I think that makes this a pretty profound poem in, in being able to do that. So once again, here is For a Dog by Ryan Wilson. You'd wake us up, that shrill, insistent bark driving away whatever dreams had fogged our vision, and we'd rise in the true dark, wondering just what exactly, cataloged by canine instinct under threat, was there, what jogger, cat, or dog it was that dogged you from your drowse beside the easy chair and summoned your yapped pandemonium. Nine times in ten it was just empty air, some ghosted scent you sniffed. Dumb. You were dumb, like all dogs, snuffling up to snakes, afraid of mice. When we said come, you wouldn't come. You capered when commanded to play dead, and when we wanted most to be alone, you'd offer up that imbecilic head until we crowned your pity with a bone. Our lives took on the shape you spun from need, the harried rondure of routine. You gone, the house is quieter, and we've been freed forever from the never-ending chores your tail entailed. The scrubbing where you peed, the hunting stain removers down in stores. What's hardest are the peaceful hours we wanted so much when you were scratching up the doors and howling at some phantom thing that haunted the world without, some threat we couldn't see that you were desperate to have confronted. Now you're part of that present unity of absences the living move among, in which what was, what will, and what can't be dance in a ring to a triumphant song we don't have ears to hear or heart to see, who sleep now perfectly and much too long. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll be back on Monday with another poem for you.